Williams. I serve as president and CEO of the council. The council was started in 1995 in Washington, D.C. So we've been celebrating our 25th anniversary of promoting Ukraine as a place to do business, working to make Ukraine an easier and better do place to do business, and representing the interests of our companies who invest and do business in Ukraine, and many of them who would like to expand in Ukraine. We're very pleased that we have over 300 people who have registered for this uh, event. The U.S.-Ukraine Business Council now has over 200 members, which makes us the largest uh, private Ukraine-specific trade association in the world that's not headquartered inside Ukraine. We're very pleased to have uh, uh, a very important figure in the government of Ukraine to, uh, to be a uh, uh, you know, on this panel, Yuri Vitrenko, he'll be with us in just a moment. The title of our program today is a conversation with him about expanding oil and gas supplies and having free market solutions to Ukraine's energy challenge through private and public companies. As a private business association working with private companies, we certainly believe there's plenty of room in Ukraine for public companies and private companies to work together to expand Ukraine's energy supplies. That's in the best interest of Ukraine and the best interest in the people of Ukraine. We have a very top expert panel with many years of experience uh, to participate in the panel today. First, I'd introduce Ed Chow. He's Senior Associate Center for Strategic and International Studies. Ed has been an observer uh, experienced uh, energy uh, executive and analyst and has been an observer of the Ukraine scene for many years and a uh, sought after speaker and panelist and a uh, very top expert on energy in Ukraine. Next is Dale Perry. Dale Perry is the managing director of energy resources of Ukraine. They're a grain trader. They've been working to expand the private sector and to have a free market in Ukraine and the you know, reduce uh, Ukraine's dependence upon Russia and other uh, sources that they'd like to get rid of. And we have Dr. Irina Polyeshvili. She's president of the ULOG Ukrainian Legal Group. She's a senior member of the uh, U.S. Ukraine Business Council Executive Committee, and she specializes in law related to energy issues. And then we have Victor Gladden who's the CEO of JKX Oil and Gas uh, Company and JVPPC, which is a private uh, energy company. So we have uh, Victor representing a private energy company who's been trying to work and expand in Ukraine, same way with Derry, Dale. And then we have uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Paulia Savili, who's worked on many, many legal cases and helped many companies form their legal contracts in Ukraine. And then to then, and then uh, Ed, Ed Chow. I see that, uh, that uh, Yuri is now there. So uh, we're very pleased to have uh, the uh, new CEO of NAFTA Gas with us today, uh, Yuri Vit Vitrenko. He's in Washington. And so, uh, Yuri, thank you very much for being on this webinar. We have over 300 registrations and so there's a strong interest in in uh, uh, NAFTA gas and in your presentation so Yuri th thank you once again for being on the program we'll turn it over to you now for your opening comments uh, thank you very much uh, sorry for being late a little bit uh, I am we were discussing the upcoming visit of the Ukrainian president to the US uh, we believe that it's a very important uh, step to make sure that uh, the strategic cooperation between the US and the Ukraine uh, will be strengthened and it will be a solid basis uh, for Ukraine's security uh, going forward. Um, I would mention uh, very briefly that uh, uh, for those who know me, uh, um, they understand that uh, I, I've been always very uh, supportive uh, for and um, uh, turning the gas uh, into a platform to attract uh, foreign uh, direct investments. 
and to develop markets because that's the role of the national company the way I see it. It's not to crowd out competition. Uh, it's not to uh, um, uh, create any kind of barriers for uh, international uh, partners and international investors to come and to make uh, uh, successful business in Ukraine. It's vice versa. So we are here to uh, facilitate uh, private investments. Uh, we are there to develop uh, the markets. Uh, we are there to uh, be a safety net uh, for Ukrainians so that they're not afraid of uh, uh, market developments. And uh, again, uh, sometimes even some kind of uh, problems associated with uh, uh, this development uh, when markets are not mature and when there are some concerns, sometimes grounded concerns about uh, uh, market failures and uh, uh, their effect on um, security of supply, for example. Uh, but we are here to help and uh, uh, to make sure that, again, markets can and will be um, developed uh, sooner rather than later. Um, I think that, um, I would uh, rather uh, uh, discuss, uh, again, any uh, burning or all the burning issues and uh, answer questions instead of just delivering some lengthy presentations. Well, thank you. Thank you very, uh, I guess, first, let's uh, get a little more uh, explanation from you about how you see uh, NAFTA gas uh, being improved how you see they're expanding their own production and becoming a more efficient uh, modern company. Uh, a few words from you about your goals and plans uh, uh, for NAFTA gas. Uh, production is probably the priority for NAFTA gas at the moment. Uh, and uh, we need to increase the gas production because we need to realize the resource potential of Ukraine. Um, in order to increase gas production, and we have some uh, uh, success stories, I would say, um, in, uh, in production. When I was coordinating Ukra Gazo de Bovania, that's the uh, gas producing uh, subsidiary, uh, production was growing. It grew by 1 billion cubic meters. Uh, if we look at the uh, gross production or uh, uh, sale of so-called trade gas, so whatever... Uh, measure you're looking at, looking at, you will see that uh, production was uh, increasing. Then unfortunately, when I was not coordinating this subsidiary, production started to decrease. Uh, and that was very unfortunate given that uh, both the society uh, and the, the government uh, expected uh, production growth. Uh, a similar situation with Ukrnafta, was I was coordinating Ukrnafta, production was growing. Um, it's not that I'm somehow unique in this respect. Uh, uh, but my approach is very simple. In order to grow production, um, you need to make sure that uh, Ukraine attracts uh, international uh, companies as uh, partners, uh, as investors, again, as suppliers of services and, and products. Uh, uh, why it is important? It's not that uh, we're somehow um, uh, inferior, but uh, we do uh, lack uh, modern technologies and modern know-hows. Um, we are rather obsolete uh, in terms of uh, approaches uh, in gas production. And that's why, um, and nowadays, uh, gas and oil production, uh, it's more like a, a technology business rather than just a resource business. That's why it's very important, again, to attract these modern technologies and people who can uh, apply uh, these technologies. So that's why... Uh, going forward, again, uh, in order to grow production, and as I mentioned, it's our priority, we will be working with international partners uh, uh, on all the fronts. Uh, and by the way, we have a very successful example of such partnerships, which, for example, um, a company called Expert Petroleum. Um, that's unfortunately probably the only uh, international partnership that we have operational at the moment at Aftagas. But this partnership proved to be very successful and uh, Again, we're growing production uh, over there. Uh, so we will leverage this success story and uh, we hope to have uh, uh, more success stories. But by the way, it's not just about NAFTA gas per se. So we are absolutely okay because we are the national company. So for us, what is important is that Ukraine uh, uh, realizes its resource potential. And when uh, other companies, private companies that uh, have nothing to do with NAFTA gas, when they grow uh, production, we see it as a benefit for Ukraine. So we're, I guess I mentioned, we're ready uh, to help. We're here to help, not just to crowd out uh, competition. 
Well, thank you very much. That's very good news to the private sector and to, to private investors. Um, when you talk about uh, partnerships and, and working with the private sector, um, the uh, rumor kind of been in the past that uh, after guest says they like the private sector, but only if they work for them, not if they uh, work on their own or not if they have uh, some kind of a, uh, a real partnership with NAFTA gas uh, uh, joint operating uh, p program rather than just being a contractor. So when you say you'd like to, we know of a lot of US companies and we've talked to many in Houston who have all the modern technologies. They'd like to find a way to work with NAFTA gas. I'm not sure they exactly want to be just a, uh, a contractor They'd like to, you know, have a more equal relationship and so more uh, of a, a standard corporate uh, uh, arrangement. So what can more can you tell us about how you uh, think you can bring private companies and their technology in with NAFTA gas instead of just uh, I know you need contractors, but there may be some other ways to be in partners with NAFTA gas that would be more interesting to uh, international partners to uh, provide you with all the technology and expertise that they have, because you have a lot of, I mean, you have limits on your technology, your, your finances. There's probably lots of ways the private sector could work with you to expand all the rights and licenses that you have in different ways than what NAFTA gas has been willing to do in the past. I would say that, uh, again, my results uh, uh, speak better than, uh, than words, basically. So for example, I was responsible for gas uh, imports uh, in 2014, 2015, 2016, 17, and 18. And uh, NAFTA gas at that time was in full control over the pipeline. So we could uh, uh, block any third parties or any other companies from importing to Ukraine, from trading in Ukraine. Uh, but what I did when I was managing uh, this uh, area or this work stream is that uh, instead of just, for example, making companies work with NAFTA gas or making companies uh, do what we wanted them to do, we uh, opened the market basically without even any formal unbundling. So there are many companies, some of them are present on this call, that were able to import and uh, to become basically big importers and big traders in this market because NAFTA gas and my team basically made everything possible um, made it possible for them uh, to do that. So we gave uh, all the necessary access uh, uh, to the pipes. Uh, we facilitated the market development. Uh, we changed even the uh, legislation uh, in order to develop like a proper wholesale market in Ukraine. So that's, that's the real thing. It's not basically some kind of hypothesis or, or, or a promise. That's what I, we have already done. Uh, if we look back at uh, production, um, Again, we are ready to buy, again, services and products uh, from international companies like the one that you mentioned from the US. Uh, if they want to come and uh, have like a formal partnership with NAFTA gas, for example, like a production enhancement contract uh, or any kind of partnership, uh, again, we're also, we would welcome such partnership and we would uh, consider, again, working together. But if they want just to come and to invest on their own, and they want, for example, NAFTA gas either to provide access to some um, uh, infrastructure, basically, or again, to help with uh, some services, whatever. So as I said, uh, we are the national company. Uh, it's our duty to develop the market and to help, help other companies uh, operate efficiently in the market for the benefit of Ukraine. And that's exactly what we'll be doing. So we're open to all, ki all kinds of uh, cooperation, even with our competitors as a national company we have this luxury not to look at other companies at, uh, as competitors uh, we're not there to compete we're there to develop uh, ukraine and to develop the market well that's the best news we've heard in a long time that's very refreshing the final question before we turn to the panelists is about production sharing agreements most of the international companies that we work with they said that they to work in ukraine and to put hundreds of millions in there they needed a production sharing agreement. The government of Ukraine put one on the table. There were, I don't know, nine, 10, 11 uh, places put up for bids. There were uh, several companies won those. NAFTA gas won most of them. It was always curious. It was NAFTA gas bidding 
uh, as a government entity again, for government properties. We all thought those production sharing agreements really should be only open to uh, the private sector. Then uh, it took a long time to get it started. Then after the c contracts were awarded, it took, I don't know, a year, year and a half to get a, finally get a contract. The one contract that was awarded to two U.S. companies is now being blocked by a lawsuit from NAFTA Gas. So the production sharing program has not really been very successful. And most companies say we're still sitting on the sidelines until there can be a free, fair, transparent uh, production sharing uh, program implemented by the government of Ukraine that allows us to have those long-term contracts and go to court internationally. So we know that there's hundreds of millions of dollars sitting on the sideline waiting for a modern, effective PSA program from the government of Ukraine. What are your observations and comments about the government of Ukraine uh, doing a better job with their PSAs? And Morgan, uh, I, as I uh, I mean, they international partners, I express deep concerns about uh, this situation. But, but again, uh, seriously, I also have questions. Uh, it's kind of unusual to see a state-owned company uh, signing a PSA agreement with its own government. Uh, so I also thought that the PSAs are for are designed basically to facilitate uh, foreign investments, um, and uh, that's something that uh, we are currently looking at and trying to change. Uh, um, as probably many of you know, uh, uh, we have a supervisory board, we have an executive board. Uh, uh, we are in the process of uh, launching. The government is in the process of launching a new tender. Uh, for the new supervisory board. And uh, again, there are certain limitations uh, uh, because of some kind of inertia or decisions made in the past. But in general, again, just to reiterate, uh, I do share these concerns. And I do believe that, uh, again, uh, uh, the government and NAFTA gas uh, should do more in order to uh, attract foreign investments, not to crowd them out. So again, NAFTA gas should not uh, crowd out competition. It should help uh, companies that are interested, for example, to sign a PSA to come and, and, and sign it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to uh, working with you on that and, and to see some real concrete movement. You said it was interesting that the government, that uh, a state entity was bidding on state properties. It's also interesting saying that a state entity uh, filed a lawsuit against the cabinet of ministers to block two U.S. companies from moving forward with their PSA. So there you got the government of Ukraine filing a lawsuit against the government of Ukraine. But we can talk about that later. Let's turn to Victor Glad. Just to not believe it, I, I, mean, I, I met with the representatives of this particular company. I know the situation. They can confirm that... Uh, uh, I told my people and uh, and this company that we will try to uh, to change the situation. Again, there are some limitations because of this kind of inertia, but I'm serious about uh, changing it. Well, very good. Uh, they have all the technology, all the knowledge, all the expertise, all the funds needed. We just need to get them to go signal. And if they're successful, that's a strong signal to other international companies. Uh, to come on in. Let's talk to Victor Glad. Victor, you've talked to me a long time about uh, a fair open market and how to, uh, for the people of Ukraine, the government of Ukraine, and everybody, uh, increase production. Your comments, uh, Victor? Um, thank you very much, William. Um, we have a good uh, experience uh, over the years with uh, uh, Naknafta Gaz, Ukrnafta, and Naknadra. The reason we rented wells on our territory, so we are not on our licenses. So we do not invest. Uh, we just took it for walkovers and sidetracks. As a result, in 2018, we received, because of the bravery of management in UGV and with Naknadra and Ukrnafta, we rented those wells, not just for us, but for all Ukraine, more than 300 wells. And our result in 2018, 30, 30 percent of increase in production. So very good results for, uh, for a decent company, private company in Ukraine. So we are quite well as a partners with, uh, with these companies uh, for, for several, for more than three years. 
Another issue, we are working together with uh, Nagnafta Gas, for example, with Ukrnafta, and right now there is a demand from UGV. So we have uh, spare facilities in gas processing. We're doing it very efficiently and cheaply, and we can boost the production uh, of gas that did not belong to us, belongs for these companies. We are doing this with, as I mentioned, with Ukrnafta. Right now we are planning to do it with UGV. Yuri mentioned about product um, enhancement contract, which is a very good experience in Western Ukraine. I know from, uh, from Naknafta Gas and UGV that there is a strategy right now finalizing. So I'm wondering to learn in Poltava and, Hang and uh, sorry, and the uh, Kharkov region, there are a number of licenses that we can come as a partner and do the walk and walkovers on side tracks, maybe on new drilling in order to boost the production. We are, we are very thankful that they, that the officials invited us in past. And we think that this can help in production and in boost the production for the purpose of UGV and uh, Naknafta gas. And so this is about from cooperation to the future work that we immediately can do. Uh, it's right now finalizing as I know in UGV we can help in the sand in the Donetsk region. Another issue is very important is in licenses. Maybe if Naknafta Gas or UGV or Ukrnafta will decide that they cannot do immediate work on their resource base on their license, we can come up as a partner and help there. If not back, maybe other, in some other you know uh, legal framework. Uh, I hope the management will be. Uh, professional and brave enough to say that, look, we can work with this license. Of course, I do understand this is resource based. And I hope that more licenses will come to the private sector and private sector will expand with the companies that you mentioned, with bringing people, technologies, direct investment. Uh, so I appreciate uh, partnership with uh, these companies and I hope we will increase this in future. Thank you, Victor. We'll get back to you because I know you had five recommendations you uh, you told me about not too long ago. Ed Chow, you've had the Ten Commandments of how to uh, make Ukraine prosperous in energy and how to expand energy and help to make them uh, more self-sufficient for a long time. Talk to us about those Ten Commandments or your recommendations that uh, you've been pushing for a long time, which we most appreciate. You've been a strong spokesman for Ukraine and a strong spokesman for Ukraine having a stronger, larger, more effective energy system. Uh, thank you very much, Morgan, and thank you for uh, allowing me to join this, this panel discussion. Uh, I'm sure the audience would much rather hear from Yuri uh, than from me. Uh, 10 commandments or, or 20 commandments until I dropped a couple of the tablets. Uh, but uh, I think there are two areas that I, I would like to uh, elicit a response from, from Yuri, if you don't mind. Uh, Yuri, uh, you've only been on the job for, what, five weeks, something like that. Uh, but it seems like you've been preparing for this job all your life if we look at your background. Uh, it's really wonderful to hear you say that your vision for Nata Haas is more as an enabler and facilitator of private sector investment than, than as a, a blockage. Uh, frankly, we haven't seen in the past six years uh, from the team that you were part of and, 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 and that with all due respect, we haven't seen the kind of corporate restructuring restructuring that one might have expected looking at the history of Nafta House in the last 25 years. I know you have thoughts in this regard because, you know, uh, there was a meeting at the embassy yesterday that I was uh, unfortunately unable uh, to, to make. But what are your thoughts on, on the future structure of Nafta House, breaking them into sp uh, specific business units responsible for their own performance, and, and financial, selling non-core assets, um, outsourcing uh, in order to generate competition in, in the services uh, sector, uh, looking at redundant staff since you know, all state companies around the world have, have more people than they probably need. 
These are questions that haven't been really addressed in a systematic way in the last 30 years. Um, I know there's a complicated situation, too complicated for me to understand, uh, between uh, the supervisory board, the cabinet of ministers, and, and the executive board uh, that may take a year or more to resolve. But maybe you can tell us um, your vision of what a, a, the future corporate structure for NAFTA has would look like, uh, even uh, if, if it cannot be accomplished uh, in, in the very short term. Morgan, if I could reserve my second question, I, I, I want to see if Yuri can address my first question first. Sure. Uh, Yuri. My vision, again, but uh, I have to say that the implementation of this vision is subject to an agreement with the supervisory board. Uh, but uh, speaking of my own vision is that the NAFTA gas should be structured around uh, 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 a number of uh, basically vertically integrated uh, subholdings. For example, uh, a vertically integrated gas subholding that would um, uh, uh, include gas production, uh, but also gas trading and uh, gas uh, retail supply um, around, for example, UGVs, the Jernsta company, Ukrgas Vodobuvanya, that is... Uh, uh, the major gas producer um, in Ukraine and in uh, and NAFTA gas group. Another vertically integrated subholding would be uh, uh, around oil and the oil products. Uh, uh, you, you know that we are a majority shareholder of Ukraine NAFTA. Uh, and over there, there are two options, basically. It's either to uh, split the assets of Ukraine NAFTA into two uh, companies, uh, or to merge with uh, Ukratat NAFTA, that's the only big... Uh, oil refinery that we have in Ukraine, and in such a way to create a vertically integrated uh, oil company. basically uh, subholding, um, because uh, we believe that uh, district heating companies uh, is probably the most problematic uh, segment uh, in the market. And uh, as a national company, again, it's our duty to be a leader that would drive transformation of this sector. That is uh, necessary and uh, that is basically ripe uh, for, for a change. Um, we believe that uh, a lot should be done about energy efficiency in district heating, uh, meaning starting from in individual heat points and finishing from switching from gas to, uh, to biomass. And by the way, we would really welcome uh, uh, foreign partnerships or again partnership with foreign companies and foreign investments into uh, district heating and here we're also probably by the way energy efficiency is even more important than uh, for example gas production per se uh, and it's really important for us that we make sure that the whole value chain uh, is financially sustainable so when we produce gas we can really get 100 percent or close to 100 percent of uh, uh, collection rates uh, for the gas that we sell in the market. Currently, it's not the case. So from that perspective, uh, again, uh, we will be looking and we will be expanding our heating uh, side of the business, probably developing it into a, a separate uh, subholding with uh, rather sizable biomass uh, production, energy efficiency business, and uh, um, heating companies. Um, besides, uh, we will be looking at some um, longer term uh, uh, perspective, like, for example, hydrogen and uh, uh, carbon capture and developing these uh, businesses as well. But as you mentioned yourself, Edward, uh, it should be structured uh, as business units that would have uh, ultimate accountability for final business results, uh, financial and operational. Uh, uh, whereas uh, the uh, uh, NAFTA gas is a national company will be basically like a strategic controller of such uh, a business units. So we have to make sure that uh, we coordinate uh, uh, operations of these business units uh, um, to make it align with some national agenda. Uh, and uh, it's our task to tell the government uh, when certain business units are ready to be privatized. Because of course, again, we want to privatize uh, all the state-owned assets that are not uh, uh, no longer critical for the state to keep ownership um, uh, over. Uh, we should be facilitating prioritization. That's our role as well. Um, so basically, I would subscribe to everything uh, you said about uh, the structure of NAFTA gas. 
uh, with only one um, reservation that we have to be careful, of course, about uh, people, employees, uh, and uh, any kind of uh, redundancies or adjustments in terms of the size uh, of, the, of the personnel, uh, just because it's also our duty to find uh, opportunities for our employees. So if we develop new lines of businesses, for example, uh, we will be offering, it's about new jobs, so more productive jobs, and uh, uh, we will be uh, looking at some reprofiling, so moving people from uh, some areas where uh, it's not that productive to have that many employees uh, to areas where uh, we see some growth and where we need uh, a new people, where we see new jobs coming. So we have to be responsible about jobs as well as a national company we want, to we want to develop and we need to develop our workforce. At the same time, of course, it's all about productivity. So we need uh, not just to have new jobs, we need uh, new productive jobs and we need to increase uh, the level of expertise of our own personnel. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, if I could uh, ask my second question, Morgan. Uh, it, it's uh, quite obvious that increasing domestic oil and gas production is a priority for Ukraine. It's been a priority for 30 years. Uh, you, if you look at the reserve production ratio of, of, of Ukraine, you have to believe that either the geologists were totally wrong or there's some barrier to achieving the potential that Ukraine has in this area as in other areas. Um, so, you know, uh, today UGV, what, produces 70% of Ukraine's gas, something like that. Um, uh, Ukraine NAFTA produces almost all of Ukraine's crude oil. Um, it's good to hear you as the CEO say that you want to invite foreign investment um, to expand the country's capacity um, and not just look at the selfish interests of, of UGV or Ukraine NAFTA, which I can completely understand as a former oil company employee, by the way. Uh, that you're unwilling to give up your best prospects. Uh, you would like to preserve them for yourself rather than to share it. Uh, but, but for the country as a whole, it's not just a matter of access to technology or access to general know-how or management. It's also spreading geologic risks um, and increasing the capacity of the country at, at the same time, which you understand very well as a former in investment banker. So there are some practical steps that one needs to take if you, know, you want to go forward with, with this uh, uh, vision. Uh, for example, access to data, not just opening the data room for one week for a sneak peek, but maybe getting potential investors to buy data from a data room that they can take away and process for themselves in order to validate where the best prospects are that they would like to bid on in a future uh, bid bidding round. Um, that, as far as I understand, really hasn't taken place. Uh, Morgan was very polite to talk about partnership, but I think an equity investor may want operatorship. Uh, you know, would UGV or Ukraine NAFTA be willing to give up operatorship and their best prospects? Because an investor wants to take equity risk for equity rate return and don't want someone else to be responsible for spending the capital. So is this something that can be uh, considered? Uh, would there be royalty relief needed in certain special areas like tapping deeper zones in uh, uh, existing fields, uh, uh, tapping tight gas. I realized that the, this is not all within your control, that you would need the, the, the cooperation of the government and the RADA uh, as well. But, but that brings maybe to my last point, which is one of the problems of Ukraine investment climate is the stability of terms, that investors want to know that this is not just you know, something that's going to be around for two, three years and disappear 
And there have some sense that this is going to be around for the term of the contract, the investment conditions for 20, 30 years. And, 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 and if you don't mind my giving you uh, 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 one last point, uh, a, a piece of advice, which is that if you want to attract investors, particularly foreign investors in the future, it's really important to create a success story that you can boast about because investors tend to follow other previous successful investors. You know, getting that first success story is gonna be an example for everyone to look at and, and to follow. And you, know, you, you cannot change the whole system overnight, certainly not in the next 12 months, but you might be able to uh, put together the ingredients for a real success story for Ukraine in terms of inviting the private sector to increase uh, oil and gas production. With that, I'm, 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 I'm gonna shut up, Morgan. But actually I can subscribe to everything you have just said. So that's exactly what we are doing and considering. So again, subject to some approvals, but uh, I would say that in this particular case, our views uh, uh, are identical. So. That's exactly what I believe uh, we should be doing and I hope we will be doing. Okay, Yuri, I'm sorry. I, I meant to give you a chance to respond to some of the comments from Victor. Do you have mm -hmm. any uh, response to some of the comments that Victor made? Um, not really, because again, uh, I know Victor and we're, I, I believe, uh, good uh, friends. Uh, and from that perspective, uh, it's all about, uh, again, comparison in the best interest of, uh, of Ukraine. And uh, I do, uh, by the way, uh, if you look at the private sector, um, unlike Naftagaz, they increase production. So from a national point of view, we should be grateful to private companies that are uh, strengthening the energy security and independence of pain, creating jobs and paying tax. So from that perspective, I believe that uh, uh, what Victor was saying uh, makes a lot of sense. And uh, again, that's something that we should all uh, work on. Uh, the problem is that uh, it's not enough to declare something good. Uh, in our business, it's all about implementation and putting your money where your mouth is. So I believe that that's what we will be doing, not just talking. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's now turn to Arena uh, Polis Lavili. Arena, in your practice, you uh, You've worked on a lot of gas contracts. You've worked on a lot of negotiations, a lot of litigation. You know why companies uh, left Ukraine or why they never entered. Uh, so let's get some observations from you, Arena, about your experience with real companies in the corporate world and uh, your ideas about moving uh, the energy sector forward, particularly in oil and gas. Arena, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Morgan. Uh, before uh, I make a comment or ask my question, I just want to make a little clarification. Uh, when you said that when Nafta Haas uh, is suing the cabinet of ministers, you said it's like government against government. I just want to clarify that Nafta Haas is an independent company and uh, as any independent company, it has a right to sue the government when it believes that its rights were violated. So there is nothing strange in it. I'm not commenting here on the substance of those lawsuits, but that's absolutely normal practice and normal from the legal point of view. Uh, now, coming back to um, our, the, the main subject, you know, my, my topic is upstream. I have been doing upstream uh, for almost 30 years and not only in Ukraine, but also in the region. And of course, you know, we have been hearing for all this time that PSAs are the most bulletproof and attractive and investor-friendly mechanisms. And I was also co-author of the first PSA law and some of the amendments. So I can tell you that this has been developed with the assistance of uh, major investors in the oil and gas sector. So Ukraine's PSA law has been considered one of the best mechanisms in the region for, uh, for oil and gas projects and for other subsoil uh, resources projects. And uh, I was happy that uh, the government in the last couple of years uh, has announced about nine PSA tenders and some of the PSA have been signed. 
So I think my question to Nafta Haas is about the strategic direction, because we were talking today about PECs, and PECs are more like service contracts. They're partnerships, but they are not equity partnerships. They are more like service partnerships. And that's really great. Uh, I think this was the first ever PEC in Ukraine that was signed uh, with Nafta Haas and um, Expert Petroleum. So congratulations, it's a revolutionary step that is very important, but it's about squeezing the orange. It's about uh, enhancing the production. What about the green fields, PSAs, strategic partners? So, you know, how, do, how are you going to balance those? Are you more in favor of service companies coming in or are you looking, and you have PSAs right now that uh, Nafta has or UGV has signed. Are you looking for strategic partners for those PSAs? Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, we are looking at a full specter of um, um, opportunities to uh, work together with international companies and international uh, investors. Uh, we have some very promising assets, uh, like an offshore asset, for example, in the Black Sea. We believe it's very promising, and uh, we already starting. Recently, we signed a contract for Seismic, and we uh, believe that uh, the Seismic will show that there is a huge resource potential uh, in the Black Sea. Uh, and uh, for such a big project, we would definitely need uh, international partners that would bring necessary technology and capital. Uh, we also have some promising assets uh, onshore, uh, for example, Yuzivska uh, um, area. Uh, we believe uh, there are big resources over there. Um, and we would also love to have international partners uh, uh, working on, with us uh, on these assets. Uh, we would even consider, again, just uh, uh, selling it to an international partner or basically giving as much equity as we need uh, in this asset. So we're not supposed to be greedy. Again, it's more about uh, making sure that uh, we can move forward while attracting international partners. Uh, because uh, sometimes, of course, uh, when, um, it just takes too much time uh, to work out a partnership. But from a national point of view, we should still develop these assets. Uh, it may make sense uh, to uh, invest on our own. Uh, to de-risk an asset and then attract uh, partners at the later stage when risks are lower. So as a national company, we are there to take uh, risks uh, that, again, that uh, make sense basically from a national uh, standpoint. Uh, we also um, know it's not just a belief because I personally, for example, talk to some um, international government slash national companies and the investors are different in terms of their preferences uh, and their business models. So, so some of them will say, we want to partner only for pure green fields uh, where there is no even discussion about the value of the asset. So we just share risks uh, and rewards from day one. Uh, while other partners, uh, especially international oil companies, they prefer uh, to look at assets uh, that have some clear kind of value and that are more or less uh, de-risked. Um, at the same time, these big assets that I'm talking about, um, unfortunately, they are in areas that uh, uh, are subject to some additional uh, political and geopolitical risks. Uh, you understand, for example, when I talk about Black Sea uh, exploration and production, there is a risk uh, associated or risks associated uh, with uh, Russian military aggression in the region. Um, again, the Yuzevska uh, area is, is, is close to temporarily occupied territory. So there are also some issues around it. So from that perspective, again, it's not an easy, I would say, uh, um, cluster of projects, uh, but still we're working on attracting proper international partners to these projects. At the same time, uh, we do have some producing assets uh, and we believe that uh, we can produce more out of these assets. Edward Joe mentioned, for example, our reserve to production ratio. Uh, when we look at it, we understand that we can increase production even if we just uh, increase it to a, to a level of our peers. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, uh, we need to analyze what we lack and <coughs> just uh, some competences 
uh, or again, as I mentioned, technology and, and capital. So attracting um, partners to these producing assets, mature assets, uh, cash generating assets, <coughs> also makes sense. Uh, that's why, again, we're looking at the <coughs> your greenfield to some mature cash generating assets for partnerships. Yeah, I think it's, it's really um, very um, rewarding for those uh, international oil and gas companies that were interested in Ukraine for years to hear what you are saying today, that you, know, you as Naftohas are not as interested as driving them out as you are interested in bringing them in. Because I have personally seen several companies leaving the market because they just couldn't compete. You know, there was a pretty strong domination by state, by, by companies that, uh, whose sole shareholders was the state. And uh, at this point, it's, it's a good news that you are saying that, you know, Nafto House is ready to uh, compete with, uh, with international oil and gas companies. But also, you know, one more question that I have, and I cannot not ask it because as a legal community and business community, uh, we, we think that, uh, you know, living under the subsoil code that was adopted in the early 90s, that, uh, you know, at the time when nobody even was talking about renewables or about uh, any modern uh, mechanisms, do you have any uh, idea or any strategy about legislation? How, how the subsoil code is going to uh, evolve and when? Do, do you have any inclination you know, to work on this issue, on updating the subsoil code? Uh, first of all, it's my understanding that, uh, again, it's being modernized and uh, there are some advances and some important changes uh, uh, it, now, for example, the way we develop wells is different, basically, from the way we were six years ago. So there are some advances, but not saying that uh, uh, it's already a kind of up to a modern standard. Uh, so we need to uh, continue modernizing it. And uh, um, as NAFTA gas, we are also supposed to be in the leading kind of position uh, uh, in developing and modernizing the um, uh, subsoil code. Although here I would welcome um, uh, more active participation from uh, private companies, because as you mentioned yourself, uh, when uh, a state-owned company is fighting with the state about the legislation, it's sometimes, uh, again, it's not well perceived. So of course we have to explain that we're not fighting with the state or against the state, we are helping the state to modernize this legislation so it's more attractive for foreign investments. Uh, but uh, in order uh, for such claims to be credible, we need these claims to be supported by the private sector so that the state understands that we're doing it not for our own benefit, uh, just because uh, you should also understand that, again, uh, there are some environmental concerns. People would think that uh, what we're trying to do is just to have some shortcuts and not to be serious about... Uh, again, uh, environmental protection or uh, safety and um, HSC, health, safety and environment, basically. So again, many uh, states uh, suspect oil and gas companies that we want to compromise on HSC. So it's not our intention. And that's why we need very strong partnership with the private sector so that together we explain to the state that we're not compromising on HSC. It's about a very different thing. It's about, uh, and we're not, by the way, um, vultures in terms of just uh, taking uh, as much gas as possible now without caring about the resource potential in, in the future. Uh, what we're doing is just we're modernizing it. So with modern technologies, it's not bad basically for HSC, it's the opposite. And it also allows us to get more out of existing reservoirs, not less. So that's why we would welcome some uh, partnership with the private sector uh, on this front. Yeah, I just want to say that private sector has been very active on this and, uh, you know, USUBC, MCM, EBA, we all have been working on the new subsoil code. There have been several drafts that have been, you know, like phantoms appearing, disappearing. So I think it's time now to really get serious about it. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, let's turn now to Dale Perry, the Managing Director of Energy Resources of Ukraine, a private company a private gas trader, I think to the largest private gas trader 
on the market. Uh, they've been uh, working for several years. They have uh, some working relationships with the gas company in Poland, uh, not only for gas supplies, but also for uh, exploration and drilling in Western Ukraine. Uh, they're very interested in free market solutions to Ukraine's energy challenges. Dale Perry, Dale, it's all yours. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Morgan and uh, Yuri. Welcome to the United States in your uh, in your new role, um, and hopefully, hopefully, you have a productive visit here this week. Uh, yes, uh, as Morgan uh, indicated, uh, we uh, ERU is the uh, remains. Uh, I think four or five years now have been the largest private uh, gas trader. Uh, active in Ukraine. We are a U.S. privately held company. Um, and I think uh, to clear up any uh, doubts that still seem to linger out in the market, uh, the company is owned 51% by me and 49% by uh, my Ukrainian partner, uh, Yaroslav Mudri. Um, so uh, one of the reasons that we've been able to uh, become uh, the size that we, that we are uh, was that a little over four years ago, we were able to uh, uh, secure and conclude um, political risk insurance from, uh, at that time, OPIC, now known as US DFC. And, uh, and we found that that uh, support uh, and, and that, uh, that um, insurance has, uh, has given comfort to uh, people that finance us and finance our gas that we put in storage traditionally this time of year going into the summer so that we can then sell it uh, in the winter. Um, we expect, uh, well, actually yesterday, uh, the EBRD uh, board of directors did approve uh, our loan and we will be signing that uh, during the annual meeting at the end of, uh, end of June. And so uh, we're hopeful that we'll find useful ways to deploy that capital into the uh, Ukrainian market. Um, as also, as Morgan had uh, mentioned, uh, we're, we're reaching the end of uh, concluding the agreements with PG&IG on the ENP uh, side for a license that we acquired uh, a year and a half ago over on the Ukrainian-Polish border. We as ERU, we are not in the ENP business and we don't pretend to be in the ENP business. That's PGNIG's work, uh, but we do the development for that, uh, have done the development for that project and we're looking at other assets uh, on their behalf as well and opportunities in Ukraine. We hope that this is a, a good positive step for PG&IG and I know and understand that they've signed a, an a MOU with, uh, with Naftagas and hopefully their experience with us will also lead to a, a good experience uh, working, working with, with, with you guys at, at Naftagas. The area that I really wanted to focus on here today and the, the specific question that I have for Yuri is really around uh, the retail part of, uh, of the gas sector. Um, we, along with Naftogas, along with uh, quite a few others, we were making headway at the end of last year and into January uh, uh, of seeing that the retail gas market was opening up. We were, we, we were uh, you know, getting new customers to switch to, to our, our product. I know that Naftogas was getting a lot of customers to switch. Uh, but then decisions were made and had to be made uh, in, in January, unfortunately, that have brought kind of to an end right now, that retail market. And, you know, I'm aware and seeing uh, the very specific uh, work done by USAID uh, on some proposals on how the retail market really can be structured and, and can be, shall we say, reopened. Uh, we ourselves, ERU, have uh, put together a proposal that looks a lot like the the, the success that has happened on the wholesale side of selling to UTG and to the system operator, where we've, we've been able to demonstrate over the last three years that our participation and others in that market have brought down uh, the supply uh, costs to, to those two entities. And we think the same, we know the same can happen in the retail market. So my, my question, Yuri, is um, as the CEO now of Naftagas, uh, as uh, the CEO of a company that was was having success in the retail side uh, with with your your uh, retail comp competitive company, um, are, are you prepared to to move forward and advocate to kind of restart the liberalization of the retail sector of the gas market? And if so, how do you how do you see that happening? USAID is proposing that maybe a couple uh, regions. Uh, be, be separated out this year and, and, and basically run some pilots, uh, some pilot uh, demonstration um, uh, projects to show how uh, the retail uh, supply, uh, the competitive retail market 
uh, can be structured so that it can liberalization can kind of restart. And let me clarify what you mean, because actually uh, there was this temporary price cap, uh, by the way, suggested by the previous CEO of Naftagaz, Andrei Kobelev, uh, but this price cap expired uh, in March, I believe. So since uh, April, uh, there are no explicit or implicit limitations uh, for the competition in the retail segment. Uh, so, But these, and, these, these very large contracts have been signed now. So uh, there is a, a big contract between, again, signed under Andrei Kobelev uh, time as a CEO between Naftagaz and the uh, so-called Firtash companies. So companies that are controlled by Mr. Firtash, uh, they are dominant in uh, as retail supply to households. Uh, they also control uh, regional distribution companies. Um, this contract is still in place. Uh, um, I do understand that it affects competition. And uh, there are questions being asked uh, uh, by different uh, authorities, including the Anti-Monopoly Commission uh, or Committee of Ukraine. Uh, we're looking at this contract. Uh, there are certain things that I personally uh, do not like, is that uh, the Spiritish companies can actually buy from Naftagas at a price that is currently below the spot price under this longer term contracts and can resell this gas uh, to uh, industrial uh, customers. Uh, so we basically created some kind of arbitrage opportunities uh, for um, uh, Firtash companies, so which is kind of uh, a tricky thing, uh, given the declared fight with oligarchs. Um, at the same time, I do understand uh, the underlying logic why the state um, uh, was uh, welcoming Nafta Gas to uh, uh, offer a product in the wholesale market uh, for uh, retailers that would enable retailers to uh, sell a gas to households uh, with a so-called annual contract. Because unfortunately, if you look at the wholesale market in Ukraine, uh, we um, we don't have a liquid basically market for um, annual products or for longer term um, uh, products, even for water ahead products. That's something that we should be all working on. Uh, but to cut a long story short, uh, again, there are certain concerns that we have. We're looking at alternative solutions, like, for example, balancing groups uh, that we would be um, analyzing as an alternative where Nafta Gas uh, uh, would welcome private companies to create these balancing groups where Nafta Gas would provide uh, uh, some guest resources for longer term contracts at the same time we would facilitate uh, competition and, and, and market development. Uh, so by and large, again, we want to see some proper competition in the uh, retail segment. Uh, we want to make sure that dominant players like Firtash companies cannot abuse their dominance and not just basically by just complaining to the anti-monopoly committee, but through some institutional kind of framework uh, to ensure that uh, it's not the case. And again, it's our role uh, as a national company to lead such market development. We also have our own retail arm. We would develop it. Uh, so we want to have some meaningful market share, not to become a dominant player, but just to have this kind of real feeling of the market so that nobody can fool us and the state. Uh, but again, it's just developing the ecosystem, it's helping partners, helping other companies uh, uh, to compete even against uh, such dominant players as, uh, for example, Fiatish companies. Okay, no, no, I, I, pre I pre appreciate the, 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 that response. Uh, I, I would just ask a kind of a, just ask you to consider because of your important position uh, as um, uh, in, in the market and as a state-owned entity, if it was possible for you to consider, you know, there's a, this large gas conference coming up in the middle of July and around that gas conference, it would be possible to kind of convene uh, a workshop uh, that would be coordinated by USAID. Uh, my, my tax dollars have, uh, have, a lot, have gone to help USAID put together some very interesting proposals around this. And I think that they, along with you, could, could lead a very healthy conversation around this, that maybe we could get something kickstarted again, uh, even, even around this, uh, th this contract issue that has kind of put a hiccup in the market. But I, I'd ask you to con consider that. I think it would be helpful for the market. Definitely consider it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, Yuri, there's been uh, some few years ago, there was some work about 
uh, turning the managing of the gas transportation lines over to an international consortium. I know we had a U.S. company, I think one of the largest in the world who does this, and some others that were very, very interested uh, and wanted to be, have a chance to see if they could be a player. And then the, the, uh, the thing kind of disappeared. But uh, just the last few days, uh, one of your key officials said that maybe a, the, an international consortium uh, managing your gas transportation was, was back on the table. Uh, and this would be an opportunity for private, large private sector companies to, to be a player there. Any comments about that? I was the one who met with this big uh, U.S. Uh, transmission system operator, and uh, I had the initial it is, discussions and negotiations over their participation in the uh, um, operation shape of the uh, Ukrainian gas transmission system, as well as uh, I was the one who was luring uh, European companies into this kind of consortium uh, before. Uh, but the point is very simple. Um, if we talk about uh, big investments, it's less about uh, declarations, but more about uh, nitty gritty and some real work to make it happen. And what all these companies uh, want to see, they want to see some real um, willingness and capacity from the Ukrainian side um, to structure and again, implement this kind of partnerships. Um, and I, by the way, believe that uh, some kind of political will is there so what is missing, again, is some real capacity to make it happen. And I hope that we will change it. And I hope that uh, we will be able to bring, um, again, partners uh, to the gas transmission system um, uh, as well. Because it just makes a lot of sense in general. Uh, uh, we have rather poor access to capital markets, unlike basically uh, big uh, companies in the West. Uh, infrastructure business is rather attractive uh, for a particular investor base. Again, pension funds, insurance companies, uh, they are ready to uh, finance uh, this kind of uh, deals and companies who would make some equity investment. ...is much higher than, than ours. So when they are a partner, it means that uh, uh, we will have less costs uh, uh, of uh, lower costs of transmission. At the same time, uh, it would also allow us to improve the image of the Ukrainian gas transmission system as more reliable, again, uh, more modern, uh, more efficient. So uh, again, it's a win-win situation that uh, it just basically what it takes is just to make it happen, to, to implement such kind of partnerships. It's less about talks, it's more about some real stuff. As a former investment banker, I can tell you that's a lot of work to structure and implement such partnerships, but somebody needs to do it. Well, thank you very much. The corporate development strategy for 2025 for NAFTA gas calls for the company to enter the U.S. gas market, EU gas market and sell gas there. What can you tell us about that? Would you please repeat the question? Sorry. Uh, the corporate strategy for 2025 with NAFTA gas adopted in 21 calls for the company to enter the EU gas market and sell gas there. Now, we have a number of um, entities in the EU um, uh, market, basically, that we are using for trading. Uh, one company in Switzerland, uh, a couple of companies in the EU, uh, or entities, I would say, uh, that we are going, we intend to use uh, for trading, for hedging, um, just because it's, it makes more, again, like operational sense. Uh, um, that's probably what you mean and what, that's what the strategy implies. So, but it's used uh, not to, um, uh, to be a big player in the European market. It's more like to facilitate uh, trading and supply in Ukraine. So we're hedging our portfolio that we have in Ukraine and since we're still sourcing gas from Europe or buying gas from Europe, we need some entities as uh, uh, vehicles uh, for efficient sourcing of gas from the West. That, that's the point. You're in Washington. We assume you have some message for the U.S. government in terms of their support for energy development in Ukraine, their support for expanding uh, U.S. investments and, uh, and uh, help from the Department of Energy, et cetera. What can you tell us about your message uh, to the U.S. government uh, uh, that you're bringing here about supporting Ukraine's energy development in the future? 
I would say this message is uh, structured around three major topics. Uh, the first topic is Nord Stream 2. And here we're trying to uh, persuade uh, the, uh, the executive branch of the, uh, of the US government is that, uh, and we, we basically see some positive development, even for example, Blinken, uh, yes, uh, uh, State Secretary, uh, yesterday, uh, or a couple of days, yesterday probably, he appeared in, in the Congress basically in front of the Foreign Relations Committee and uh, uh, he was saying that the US administration would consider lifting uh, uh, these uh, waivers uh, uh, that uh, unfortunately, again, uh, allowed Russians to continue uh, with the construction of the Nord Stream 2. But what we're saying that, look, uh, Nord Stream 2, uh, we need to stop it. Uh, because it's a security issue for Ukraine and, and for Europe, and uh, not just energy security, but military security as well. But also it's an important symbol uh, for Ukrainians uh, that uh, the West uh, puts uh, uh, their uh, money where their mouth is, and that it's a rule-based world order that prevails over some short-sighted commercial gains of some German companies. It's an important message uh, for Ukraine because uh, you and your colleagues were mentioning that uh, uh, foreign investors want to see some rule of law in Ukraine um, and for Ukrainians to advance on this rule of law, to implement necessary reforms that would establish this, this rule of law, rule of law uh, Ukrainians should get some positive examples from the West. And when uh, what they see looks like basically hypocrisy at best, then of course it's not a very encouraging basically example to promote uh, real reforms in Ukraine. So that's an important consideration as well. Uh, the second uh, area of, uh, of this kind of messages or our discussion is uh, um, the climate change and again, new energy, I would say. And here uh, we want to focus on um, some messages, first of all, that uh, gas is a kind of transitional fuel uh, from old energy to new energy, to completely new uh, clean energy. But at the same time, what we're saying here that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, what is really important is to, for example, biomass in the uh, district heating uh, sector. And uh, we also welcomed um, uh, U.S. investments and partnership with U.S. companies uh, in this sector. We had a separate uh, meeting with the Department of Commerce. We even uh, discuss some potential road shows here in the US where we would show some very concrete uh, investment projects in the district heating sector, uh, including, for example, project to switch from gas uh, to, to biomass and other basically technologies uh, around uh, energy efficiency in district heating, for example, and as well as other sectors. And uh, a third or last but not least, uh, it's cooperation in the uh, hydrocarbon uh, production. It's probably less fashionable nowadays, as we all understand. Um, but at the same time, uh, we did discuss uh, that we had some huge potential to produce more in the nearest future. And we need to work together with our US partners to realize this potential. Um, and again, we had some rather fruitful uh, discussions around this area as well. Well, thank you very much. We're very pleased to have you in the United States and hope you come back often. And, and we, do new, we do see a new opportunity for support from the United States and cooperation with Ukraine. And of course, we think a high priority ought to be in the energy area. So you can be sure that uh, the U.S. business community supports uh, uh, expansion of the U.S.-Ukraine partnership. And as President Zelensky has said, to raise it to a new level. So you being here and meeting with key people uh, and other officials coming uh, can play a key part in uh, expanding and renewing that relationship. And we all will want to see, we of course, as you say, we want to see more than talk. We want to see action. We want to see results. We want to see concrete uh, deliveries because the business community's bottom line, they want to see more prosperity in Ukraine. They want to see more jobs in Ukraine more opportunities to invest. Almost every company that we know of wants to increase their investments in Ukraine and, of course, wants to have a better and easier business environment. So, Victor, let's turn quickly to you for any additional comments. 
Have you mentioned all those five points that you mentioned? Yes, thank, you. thank you very much, Morgan. Thank you. I just want to thank Yuri and all panelists for the open position declared. And exactly, let's capitalize on the success. And I'm not talking about the JKX and Nakhna Gas. I'm talking about the private sector involvement. It's a well lease. It's a gas processing. We can boost production for you, not only for our guests, but for you. And uh, probably PEC is a good, uh, is dependent from the strategy. As a partnership, we can come and we can we can produce on your on your licenses and relatively quicker. And the last one, I, I saw questions from the audience. Can I ask the question about go private? What is the what is the plan for Nakhna Gas on IPO, if possible? Uh, we are uh, on one hand again. We're making uh, the whole company uh, ready uh, for an IPO. Uh, the ultimate decision is with the government. Uh, but frankly. Um, that's what we're discussing also internally, and we will have the discussion at the supervisory board level. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, an IPO of the uh, conglomerate, uh, and NAC is a conglomerate, is the best idea. So um, maybe we should be looking an, uh, uh, at an IPO, for example, Ukr Gas with a gas, uh, a gas basically subholding, uh, that would be like a very pure play for investors. And uh, it would be, as a former investment banker, I can say that. Uh, there is such thing as a conglomerate discount, and many investors uh, uh, prefer, again, much more kind of pure place uh, uh, entities. Um, and then we would have, as I mentioned, a vertically integrated uh, gas company, a vertically integrated oil company, again, an efficient and uh, uh, energy kind of or uh, carbon neutral, uh, basically, uh, heating uh, subsidiary or heating uh, subholding. And uh, probably we should be talking about uh, floating these subholdings rather than the conglomerate. Uh, but of course, again, um, we have to modernize the national company, Naftagaz as a whole, on all the fronts, and then see uh, what is best at a particular time, basically, for a particular asset, uh, be it an IPO or be it, be it a strategic sale, uh, when we just, again, attract some uh, in, in strategic investors, uh, not through an IPO. Um, but we should be looking at it at uh, asset uh, by asset basis. That, that is this my personal view. Thank you for this. Uh, so I don't have any questions. Except and a matter of we time, can, basically, we can be told to allows us to be sorry. faster. Um, so, sorry, just to finish. So sometimes also it, it also allows us to be uh, to move at different speeds. So, for example, we can be uh, uh, ready with a certain asset. Uh, faster than, for example, with the whole conglomerate. And it also allows us to do it again earlier rather than sooner rather than later. Thank you. Just a short message. Uh, we can help boost production as a, as, a, as a clients, as a service providers, but, but as a partners as well. And we are looking forward for uh, open position on declaration to the real steps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ed, some final comments from you. Uh, uh, well, I, I just want to say, uh, wish uh, uh, Yuri and his team uh, all, all the luck uh, in the world uh, to be able to fulfill your, your vision for the company. Uh, it's music to my ears, really, to hear you talk about, in practical terms, about modernization of uh, the business model and business practices of, of Nathahas. I've always said for the last 20 years that modernization is more about, uh, it's, it goes way beyond technology and equipment, but also the way you, you can conduct your business. In order to attract um, uh, private sector investment uh, from Ukrainian capital and foreign capital, uh, you know, the business case really needs to be sound and, and, and built. Um, and as much as possible, reduce the perception of country risk in, in Ukraine. Um, as you know, um, you know the, the higher the perceived country risk, the higher potential return investors will want in order to proceed with a good project. And be, beyond that, it's all about implementation and execution, as, as you said, Yuri. So again, uh, uh, really hope that uh, this uh, a period for you and your colleagues uh, marching forward would, would go as smoothly as possible. Thank you. So Ed, uh, let's uh, summarize, summarize your first and second recommendation uh, 
to the government of Ukraine or to Europe about expanding uh, and modernizing Ukraine's energy industry. Can you summarize your first two points again? Well, I mean, I, I think a, a, a lot of these are 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 uh, self evident, and people have been talking about it uh, for for a long time. Uh, stable, predictable um, uh, regulatory environment, uh, which I, I have I have to say that you no, know, it's been uh, 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 kind of bumpy the last two years. Uh, we're looking at our fourth uh, energy minister in less than two years. Uh, Yuri was one of the four. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, investors really need uh, predictable uh, and, and, and stable uh, conditions uh, before they proceed. I think, you know, using the price signal as much as possible uh, so that um, uh, competition will drive efficiency rather than mandating or controlling prices. I think there is a understandable political desire for manual control, but but you know that the, has some work for Ukraine for 30 years, and it, and it's time to uh, trust the market. Uh, and, and the price signal for both investments in energy efficiency as well as energy production is, is really key uh, to, so that capital flows to the best projects. Um, and, and I know there's a public case that needs to be made um, to the Ukrainian population and Ukraine's elected uh, representatives. Uh, but I think uh, Yuri uh, is the uh, sort of person with the broad vision and experience to be able to articulate that in order to be convincing. Again, not something that's easily achieved overnight. Uh, you know, deregulation of the oil and gas sector in the United States took multiple years, multiple Congress, but it's important to have the trajectory of reform set rather than a zigzag path, which unfortunately, as I said, uh, that, ha that has happened all too often in the past 30 years in Ukraine. Any comments, Yuri? No, actually, uh, and, and basically with everybody on this call. So it, 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 do seems, uh, it, it does seem like uh, we have a consensus of in terms of what should be done. Again, as Edward mentioned, it's just a matter of execution. So. Uh, let's work together and let's get it done. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Marina, any final comment from you? Um, the name of your company, Naftohas, literally means oil and gas, conventionals. Uh, however, you were speaking about new energy. So what's your vision for diversification? I, I heard the word hydrogen. And uh, for example, you know, I've been subscribing to the daily Global Energy Digest for a long, long time. Five years ago, it was conventional. Then all of a sudden we had renewables, uh, wind, solar. A couple of years ago, hydrogen, especially from the Asian side. It's coming from Asia towards Europe right now. So what's your vision for diversification? Uh, first of all, uh, it's like we are the national company uh, that just happened to be Naftagas. Uh, so from that perspective, yes, historically, uh, oil and gas was very important for Ukraine. Uh, the main, basically, the most important uh, energy sources. Uh, nowadays, we see it shifting and we should support, uh, we should support uh, the Ukrainian nation in this uh, energy uh, transfer, not to confuse uh, with an American TSO uh, <laughs> energy transfer. So we need to basically make uh, Ukrainian energy greener and more sustainable. Uh, but in the Ukrainian context, uh, uh, this sustainability, it's more about, uh, or first of all, first and foremost, it's about financial sustainability. It's not just about uh, um, some fancy uh, environmentally friendly technologies. Uh, and unfortunately, currently, it's not sustainable at the moment. And sometimes for us, for example, a switch from uh, natural gas to, for example, biomass in district heating means sustainability, both financial sustainability and environmental sustainability. Um, 
Hydrogen, for example, in the Ukrainian context, it's also a source of sustainability of the sector, but in the long run, because uh, we all understand that we have a huge gas transmission system that can be used uh, to transport uh, a mix of uh, gas, including hydrogen. Uh, we also understand that uh, we have a lot of land that can be used uh, for uh, green power generation, but then there is an issue of how to store it, uh, because uh, we all know that, for example, in winter we have a deficit of uh, electricity, while in um, um, non-heating seasons, basically, we have an uh, excess of electricity. So hydrogen is, again, is a way to make this whole uh, value chain uh, sustainable. Um, Although, again, I would say that it's mid to long term uh, future um, for Ukraine. Uh, but in order to make this future uh, real, uh, we have to start working right now. So I would say the vision is the following. We address the most urgent uh, uh, issues in the gas sector. So just to stop the bleeding, like, for example, it's in district heating or uh, supply uh, sectors. Then we focus uh, uh, as an immediate priority uh, on uh, energy efficiency, uh, on basically switching gas to biomass, developing biomass, uh, again, uh, making this whole value chain really sustainable. And then in a couple of years, our primary focus uh, would be uh, hydrogen, uh, would be um, uh, carbon capture, uh, and would be uh, more longer term kind of technologies that would enable uh, Ukraine to have a sustainable uh, energy sector uh, decades uh, uh, going forward. Okay, now Dale. Uh, just a, a real quick uh, kind of wrap up comment. I've encouraged uh, Yuri to he hear that uh, of your support and interest in, in seeing that there be a very healthy, uh, competitive retail uh, sector. And so we as ERU are prepared to uh, help and support and participate in any way that we can. And I'm sure that there are a lot of other uh, competitive um, suppliers out there that would like to, to get together and to kind of uh, define that path forward. So uh, we look forward to working with you in the future on that. Thanks. Oh, Yuri, thank you very much. Uh, this is very enlightening. It's very heartening. It's very good news to the private business community who wants to do more in Ukraine, has the capacity to do more, but as many times it's been very frustrating. So it's good to hear that you're taking a look at a broader vision for the benefit of Ukraine and its people, for uh, supplies for consumers, but also for your national security interest and not being so dependent upon Russia and uh, being more independent and that, that you uh, see the broader vision and not just uh, how to build uh, naphtha gas into a stronger monopoly. So that's very enlightening and I think good news all across the world to the private business community who uh, wants to play a larger role in Ukraine. So again, thank you much. We look forward to your leadership. Thanks for being in Washington. And now for your final comments. Uh, so Yuri, it's all yours. I saw that I've already made my final comments. So again, uh, I think that uh, thank you for participating in this webinar. Uh, we are always open to uh, cooperate and to work uh, together. There are many challenges that we uh, can overcome only if we work uh, together. So that's why, uh, again, uh, let's make it happen, as I said. Okay, thank you very much. We're looking for action. We're looking for results. We're looking for the bottom line. And our slogan is full speed ahead. Thank you very much. You. And uh, we'll hope to see you again soon. Take Thank care. You. Goodbye.